Hello, everybody. Hope uh, you're all doing well. Uh, one second. Let me get the music started, you know, for you guys. The good old lo-fi. There we go. I think it's set at the correct level. Let me just uh, check real quick. Uh, I'm totally prepared, guys. I'm, I'm always prepared. Oh, yeah, it's at the right spot. All right, and it should be broadcasting to you guys. I have it set to. Yeah, just let me know if you guys can't hear the music. If it's too loud, all that fun stuff. And I've got to do a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit more setup. Just one moment. <laughs> I'm totally prepared, guys. Don't worry, this will literally take, like, a second. That's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Oh, well. Make it work. All right, so welcome in everyone for our Gunpla and Chill stream. What Gunpla do we have today? We have the FA-78-2 Heavy Gundam. The Heavy Gundam, yes. Uh, the machine that uh, Mochi uses in our SD Gundam G Generation Genesis playthrough. Well, technically, not the same exact machine. Uh, it, yeah, it, it's weird. It's, this is technically the version of the Heavy Gundam from Gundam The Origin, where everything got uh, kind of a redesign. But it's also like the only Heavy Gundam kit in existence in the high-grade scale. It'll do. It, it has everything that that one does. It's just the colors are a little different, which is fine. It still, you know, achieves the same goal. It's, it achieves the same effect. It's still the Heavy Gundam. I, in fact, the last thing I was prepping, by the way, was, well, it's line art. That's the origin version of the Heavy Gundam line art. The uh, original line art, I'll show a little bit later. <laughs> and you can definitely see the difference. So I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of an abridged version of both the uh, standard Heavy Gundam and the Origin Heavy Gundam. Yeah, that's that's just kind of how it's going to go today. Ooh. Ooh. I gotta tell you, my back is killing me right now. It's absolutely fucking throbbing and burning and aching and oh my god, what did I do to it? So, let's just, you know, kind of jump right into it. As you could tell by initially the box, uh, hi Ruby. You could have told, seen by the box, there was no color to it, meaning this was uh, another premium Bandai kit. Even the, uh, the good old uh, instruction manual is in black and white. So that's premium. So you pay a little bit extra. Um, let's see, the... Well, I mean, the sticker on here from the shop I ordered from is only 3,500 yen. That's actually not bad. And looking at the barcode thing, the MSRP. They used to do that, by the way, over where the barcode is. You see the barcode? If you look at the number up top, the last four numbers is the MSRP that they have for it. So this guy is supposed to MSRP... Manufacturer's, uh, you know, suggested retail price is 2,200 yen. So basically $22. And this guy ended up selling, or, you know, they were selling it for 3,500. Not surprised. Not surprised at all. They could have a recommended price, but this is also a premium Bandai kit, so that gets that little bit extra, you know, money on it, just in general. But, you know what, for used, this is still not bad. It's still not bad. I paid 35 bucks. The shipping cost actually shockingly more than uh, the actual kit itself. Not by much, though. I paid $69 for it. Nice. <laughs> so, got our wonderful little manual. We have a fuck ton of marking stickers. You see all those orange bits on the line art? 
and stuff. That's what these are. There's even, like, white, like, hazard ones and stuff, like you'd see on an actual uh, big piece of equipment. I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably not gonna use a lot of these because that just makes it look a little too busy, in my opinion. Like, all the little white marking warning label things, that makes it look way too busy. That's a personal thing, though. I've, I've never really been a fan of all those kind of marking uh, decals and everything. Probably use the um, uh, orange ones though. We'll see. I'll get it all snapped together if I want to add in the uh, orange uh, decals, at least more of them. Yeah, I'll do it. So, yeah. As for standard stickers, that's it. We got the eyes, and we got the uh, stickers for the head cameras. That's it. <laughs> Very simple. I like that. Uh, I decided to bust out... Oh my god, this is a massive polycap uh, runner. Oh well. I decided to bust out the, uh, you know, runner holder this time. We'll see how long I end up using it. Probably won't be for very, very long, because I want access to my stuff, you know, like, right now. You know me. Let's just finding a way to get this bastard set up is nicely so I can actually reach these is always a pain. But yeah, I think I got it. Just kind of keeps this my desk a little less cluttered. Now these guys are small, so I'm not even gonna bother putting them on the runner the uh, holder. There's no point. This will probably take, you know, my standard two hours to do, barring any uh, hiccups, or me just, you know, talking too much, which, uh, we all know that's going to happen. I always talk too much. <laughs> so, let's, uh, find the beginning here. Uh, found it. Looks like we're building the body of the machine first. a lot from a runner immediately okay i see you i see you slowly but surely i am building up the bb team very very slowly i have two that's two of the nine of us I can get for sure at least another two from my usual uh, shop that I buy from and order from. I'm kind of waiting, hoping they get a restock of uh, a third one. So, well, you know, I can get three in one go. But I don't think I'll get that lucky. Not this time. We'll see. We'll see, though. They did just have a restock, and I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'm, I was so sad. I missed out on a kit that I wanted, that I was waiting for them to finally have in stock. The Gundam Caliburn from, uh, Witch for Mercury. I knew they were eventually gonna get it. I was waiting. Then, on literally my last break of the day... Like, my last 15 minutes before I'm supposed to go home, I look at my emails, see the email for a restock that was sent an hour beforehand. I looked at the restock, saw the Caliburn, immediately raced to the site, and uh, it was already sold out. So, sad face Baron. <laughs> he missed out on the Caliburn for now. They'll probably get a restock again. I like the look of the Caliburn, okay? Oh, 
it also would have been the first Witch for Mercury kit that I would have bought. And... So I don't know, as much as I do like the looks of a lot of the suits in Witch for Mercury, uh, I don't know, just none of the model kits of them, of them kind of jump out at me. Which is an odd thing. Oh well. But why am I talking about Witch for Mercury? This is UC time. So I gotta talk about the Heavy Gundam. So. <clears throat> the Heavy Gundam is a mobile suit that came up after multiple revisions and attempts to make a more heavily armed and heavy firepower oriented version of the original Gundam. Their first plan was essentially take the initial uh, RX-78-2 and then just put extra weapons and armor over top of it. Just, just literally slapping it over the existing frame. They knew this would, uh, would cause some, uh, you know, loss of mobility and stuff because of the added weight, so they added in some more thrusters into the back. You know, to kind of try to comp compensate for it? Uh, wasn't enough. Yeah, 100% wasn't enough, so uh, the full armor Gundam actually, technically it was never made, depending on what source you're looking at. And it just kind of got shelved. A little bit later, they looked back at it and were think figuring how could they achieve what the full armor wanted to do without losing so much mobility. Well, their answer came in the form of literally building this machine from the ground up. So, rather than, you know, taking an existing mobile suit and just slapping uh, some more armor on top of it, they made this thing have its armor just already, you know, be extra thick immediately. It was already there, bolted to the, f bolted to the frame immediately. It was built as is, not put on as an afterthought. They had to do away with a few things, such as uh, the uh, fighter jet that's inside the chest, you know, part of the core block system that the Gundams could do, that all the Gundams back then kind of had. Or at least the original Gundam had back then. They did away with it, but that allowed them to add more armor plating around the cockpit. Yeah, what the fucking... Fucking fuck... And then obviously they added some a little more, they added a little bit uh, tougher thrusters because the thing still weighed, you know, it still it was still pretty damn heavy, not as heavy as the full armor, so the uh, better th uh, thrusters and stuff they put into it were able to compensate for the weight much much better. As for actual weapons, uh, they added, well, one, over the one shoulder, they added a beam cannon. This is also kind of a holdover from the uh, full armor Gundam, which had just a standard shell-firing artillery cannon over its shoulder. It's just this one, they managed to tie it into the reactor, because it was, you know, built from the ground up. So it was able to power up a uh, beam cannon itself this time, instead of relying on shell-firing ones. The original full armor Gundam also had like missiles uh, strewn about across the body, like in the shoulders and inside like the knees. Well, they did away with that and decided to localize it all into a single weapon known as the Frame Launcher. A big fuck off gun with a Gatling gun and missile launcher built into it. <laughs> and when I mean big, I mean big. It's... Once I make it in, you know, model kit form, you'll see how big this motherfucker is. Now you'd think, hey, they made this thing, so it managed to, you know, participate in the, in the uh, one-year war, right? No, development of this thing didn't finally take off until eight months after the war was over, during the, you know, technical peacetime that was going on. And they only made about three or four of them. And while they were, you know, 
well, during testing, it's like, oh yeah, they're good. They're pretty good. They're decent. Uh, they never decided to actually really use them for any kind of combat whatsoever. They ended up just being relegated to being uh, testing machines. That's it. They were just there to test stuff. That's it. That's all. In fact, one of them was lost when they tried to go into the atmosphere. So, yeah, the Heavy Gundam didn't really have much happening for it in the standard Universal Century. On the other side of the scale, though, over in the Origin version of the Universal Century, the Heavy Gundam came about after multiple different iterations of the Gundam. There was, like, the prototype, then the standard, then they made kind of a more mass-produced version of it, then they made, like, one that had more weapons on it, and then that was then further developed into this version of the Heavy Gundam we see here. It has literally everything the UC-1 has. It has the beam cannon, the big-ass fuck-off uh, gun, the armor built, uh, you know, onto it immediately and not bolted onto it later. Uh, additions, though, however, is this heavy Gundam, while it could also use its big giant gun, could also just be uh, sent out using a standard uh, beam rifle and shield. The, uh, UC, the standard UC version did not. So, that's a little something different. Uh, where does its story happen in the origin? Uh, it participated in the Battle of Solomon. One person used it, fighting uh, an Akzaku. And, well, guess what? They both disabled each other. And then that's the last they heard of the Heavy Gundam. <laughs> Not even relegated to being a test bed machine. It just got fucking annihilated. Why did I put those here? Oh, they're gonna connect into it eventually, so... Well, oh well, I did it backwards. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. It's totally fine, guys. Yeah, it's all good. The Heavy Gundam, just just, just, just a little anecdote from, from myself, is the, the Heavy Gundam is, yet again... Another one of those mobile suits where they just decided, we need something new. I know. I know what to do. Put a big cannon on its shoulder. <laughs> okay, I see what I did wrong here. Let's flip these around. Like, I, I wish I was kidding, but a lot of variations of mobile suits in general especially in the Universal Century, is take one we have and then just give it an over-the-shoulder cannon. I mean, we got the gun cannon. Obviously, it has two cannons. You got the Gundam. All right, give it a sh cannon over its shoulder. All right, heavy Gundam. And full armor Gundam. And perfect Gundam. All right, cool, but um, uh, what about the mass-produced gym? Uh, put a cannon over its shoulder. Call it the gym cannon. Okay, what about the Zaku? Put a cannon over its shoulder. Call it the uh, Zaku cannon. All right. uh, oh, 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 okay, what about this Hyzak? Put a cannon over its shoulder. Call it the Hyzak cannon. Okay. <laughs> Just any mobile suit they seem to find, if they could put a cannon over its shoulder, they were going to put it over its shoulder. <laughs> Whether it really needed one or not. Yeah, just slap a cannon over that shoulder. If you're lucky, they'll slap two cannons. I mean, look at the Madrock Gundam. That thing is basically the, like, perfect hybrid of a Gundam and a gun cannon. It's a Gundam just with the gun cannon's two big-ass over-the-shoulder cannons. <laughs> probably even more variants that I'm missing that just have, you know, a cannon over its fucking shoulder. <laughs> but I just can't think of any right now. I just had the ones immediately off the top of my head there. 
Jim Cannon, Zaku Cannon, Isaac Cannon. For extra hilarity, let's add a third cannon to the gun cannon and call it the gun cannon cannon. That'll work. Oh, yeah, it needs a third, uh, <laughs> it needs a third one. Add a few more barrels onto the gun tank. Call the gun tank cannon. Oh yeah, there's also the Gelgoog cannon. There's probably, uh, I think there's also a Dom cannon too. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, we get it, guys. You like putting cannons on things. takes me today. Again, I'm expecting probably about two hours, if not a little longer. That's fine, though. I've never built a kit from the Origin uh, line, so this is my first dive into the mechanics of them. If there are any different kind of mechanics, I mean, kind of is right now. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, squished together. Got some really funky things going on here with a waist joint. And I mean really funky. So I've been using a lot from just runners A and, uh, what the hell is it? C. Mm. Mm, so that. You should... Oh yeah, that does in fact swivel a little bit. Swivels up, and the poly cap in there can also move. Let's see if that actually gives it more move, you know, freedom of movement or not. other thing on first before I put uh, this part on. There we go. I'm gonna be very careful when I do that stuff. I do not want to wreck anything. Okay, yeah, actually, at least just right here, that gives the waist, uh, quite the crunch. Quite the ab crunch. I doubt it'll get that far once I put the rest of the, you know, the machine on here. But, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. Okay. I'm getting something from... Let's be two. There we are, B. That is B, right? It's B1. B133. Ah, there you are.
Okay. Now we're doing its backpack. Okay. Pretty interesting. It's doing the backpack now, not, not toward the end, like most other uh, model kits. It's always like do the head, do the body, and then you do the head, then you work on the arms, then the legs, then you do backpack and weapons. Not this time though. Ah, uh, and now we add the verniers. It's good old thrusters. Oh, wow, it's actually going to make me build the cannon part, too. Damn, when it says, it says to build the body, it really means the full body. I'm actually kind of impressed. There's my D. Just put that guy off to the side for now. Oh, wow. Well, actually, we're going to be doing the waste after we do this. I just looked ahead. Hmm. That's also usually kept to last. It's make the... Make the Again, make the body, make the head, make the arms, make the legs, then make the waist and put it all together. I'm actually kind of liking how this one is laid out. Compared to all the other kits I usually do. One thruster. Second thruster, and now the third thruster. The rest, I think, are just going to be in its legs. Or, well, its feet. There's always thrusters in the feet. Always. Oh. Oh, boy. What's happened now? Huh. Okay. tell you this much, it was making work pretty hard, seeing as how it's kind of hard for me to lean over right now. I have to lean over to pick up boxes. Alright, we got our thrusters. So next is its cannon. <laughs> it's big old beam cannon. At least this guy is simple. I have one of my wonderful night shifts tomorrow, so yay me. I'm going to be, like, just, uh, the whole day. Just the whole day. But, hey, well, once I'm done tomorrow night, I am off for four whole days straight. 
So, I'll take it. I don't gotta take the bad. Uh, needless to say, I'm going to be sleeping very, very, very well for the next four days. This squelching noise lo fi has right now. Ew. Relax movement, get rid of it, please. Ew. I don't need squelching. I'm relaxing, making a kit. I'm not having fun time <laughs> with the. Uh, uh, partner. Yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> yeah, you know, me with a partner. Yeah. <laughs> There's some self-deprecating humor for the day, I guess. Ah, probably not for the day. Jesus Christ, can it stop? Can it stop? Seriously? Squelching noise, like ew. It's like someone's like swallowing very, very loudly and deliberately, or spitting, and ew. Don't gross. Just eh. okay. How's a fucking. Not in some hell skis. Oh, okay, there's a key thing there for me to get her in. Now we can swivel. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so I have to plug and plug. Okay. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. I plug the cannon over here, and then the little pipe goes into a hole in the in the middle. That's pretty cool. Now, obviously, that pipe is supposed to be the thing, you know, uh, connecting the cannon to the Gundam's reactor, so it can, you know, fire off beams. A lot of uh, things then. Uh, it's like that. They have an onboard cannon like that. Uh, yeah, it's drawing power directly from the suit. Uh, I need 14. Where are you? Let's be. Oh, okay, I'm building the beam saber. Okay. It has a single beam saber. <laughs> of course it does. It's got to have that melee option for just in case something gets close to it. gone the Zeta Gundam route and, you know, made the frame launcher have a beam blade or some kind. Uh, what do I know? I'm just some random dude. I'm not a mobile suit designer. Press it down a little harder. That's all. Uh, and 14. There it is. There it is. There it is. That just slots in there, and then this just slots in here. There. He's got his cannon, he's got his saber, which can swivel if he needs to reach up to grab it. And alright, yeah, that's, that's the Heavy Gundam's body. There it is. 
We got his body, everybody. <laughs> He's a nugget right now. Well, I mean, he'll be a nugget once I get his head on. Uh, where's your face? Give me your face. Eh, it's not on this runner. Oh, it's on this runner. Okay. He's got a bright red face. Holy shit. Okay, sticker time. The eye stickers. You know how much I love the eyes stickers. Eh. I should tell you all you need to know. Well, this one isn't too bad. Yeah, that one actually went on pretty well, I'd say. It's got some bright yellow eyes. looking at it just to make sure it's straight. Yeah, alright. Then we gotta give him his mouth guard. Which, I mean, I can technically panel line the mouth face slots. But, I mean, I'd be using black on, I don't know, dark brown, gray? Oh, uh, well, that's going to show up. So, we'll give it a shot and see. I only have a black marker. Black panel liner. I should really get more Gundam markers. Well, it shows up pretty good from when I'm looking at it. I doubt you guys will be able to see it. Mostly because my camera doesn't want to focus on it. Come on, focus. I'm literally going to put this right in your faces to make this happen. Come on. Focus on the thing in front of you. Focus on the thing in front of you. I... Oh, God damn it, I hate this camera sometimes. I don't know how to make it focus on the thing I want it to focus on. Eh, uh, I give up. I need to look up the manual. It's got an auto fo It's auto focusing. I know that. I know my friend Jen has it as well. Apparently I don't know how to use it. <laughs> I don't know how to force it to focus. Also, the kind of cool thing about uh, this guy is he doesn't just have his eyes there. He's got a pair of shades over them. Yeah, he's a cool dude. He's got this, gu this Gundam has glasses. Nice big old visor. That extra protection for those very, very important head uh, eye cameras. <laughs> so those yellow eyes are now covered up with red. Okay, really? I gotta drop the fucking head. Oh, God. 
I'm gonna kind of color in his little side vents on the head there with black. Just to make those stand out a little more. Really, you guys aren't gonna see it. It's mostly for me. At this point. <laughs> I'm starting to even do this. Okay. Yeah, that makes it pop just that tiny bit more. Up close and personal. Alright, and now for its head cameras. Tiniest things in the goddamn world. Oh my god. I hate these things. I hate these things so, so much. Where's my... I'm definitely gonna need the tweezers. These are so fucking small. Oh no, don't get stuck on my... Finger. Thank you. Get in, get it, get in. Get in the hole. There you go. We made it into the hole. That's what she said. <laughs> Okay, that's it for the normal stickers. Anything else now is just gonna be those marking stickers and the orange lines. Get in your home. That's better. There we go. Cool. And now the V-Fin. It's got a very, very thin V-Fin. Like, my goodness. That is thin. I'm almost scared it's gonna snap. When I was when I moved and had all my everything, all my model kits packed up in bubble wrap, I was expecting a lot of their V-Fins to actually be just straight up broken the minute I open them up again. I, I expected it, but, uh, lo and behold, no. Out of everything, really, there was only, uh, two things that technically got damaged? The Sazabi's, uh, forehead, uh, Little crest there, it got bent a little bit, but I bent it back in place and now it looks fine. And the worst of it all is one of the tiny, thin, um, uh, swords for the, uh, gold frame stray Amatsumina. Just one of those snapped. Which, I mean, is fine. It was also a nice clean break, so I could just get some super glue and just, you know, put it together and it's like, hey, it's fine again. So yeah, overall, uh, it went really, really well. No damage, like, really on anything. So, did my stream disconnect at some point? And, no, there's no notification that it did. Apparently I disconnected from my chat at some point. Strange. Oh well. I need this to stay on. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Come on. Oh my god. This is a bitch and a half, I'll tell you that right now. 
missing a piece. Yeah, I'm not missing a piece. It's just being an asshole. Not wanting to... There you go, now you're in your home. So, I can take that and throw it onto here. There. There we go, there's our heavy Gundam with its head. He's still just a little nugget. He's just a nugget now, I gotta finish building the rest of him. <laughs> so, next is the waist. Alright. Uh, what? Oh, I actually need the C runner. Oh, this is a D runner, so I don't need that. I need the A and the B. Have those out. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so, I'm only A. I need 17 out of you. Okay. Neato, neato, neato. Yeah, at the end of the stream, I'll show off what the original line art for the standard Universal Century uh, Heavy Gundam looks like. And then you just be kind of uh, bewildered. <laughs> it's like, these are supposed to be the same machine, guys. And then probably after that, I'll show you guys an even greater difference. That being the regular line art for the prototype Gundam and the Origins prototype Gundam. Those are literally night and day. <laughs> there you are. That's the polycap I want. Beauty. Beauty, beauty, beauty. I'm sorry I'm like this today. It's just it's just too easy. <laughs> it's just way too easy right now. Is that how it wants it? Oh, like that. There we go. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I think. There we go.
a somewhat hectic day, I definitely needed this gunpla and chill. I'll tell you guys that much. Just came off of, well, you know, uh, Labor Day weekend, and... Oh boy. Store's pretty empty. In our section, big time. Because there's only one person working, uh, yesterday. Because they're the only person that said, uh, at well, least volunteered to say, yeah, I'll work Labor Day. I didn't want to this time. I didn't want to work a holiday this time. It was just... I... <laughs> Yeah, I just was not ready to do another one after the first one I did. Maybe the next one. Interestingly, though, apparently we're going to be closed on the next holiday, Thanksgiving. Which is definitely something different. Presumably, we'll still have to go in to, you know, stock the store, but it'll be a fuck ton easier because we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, customers? Like, at all. We could just solely focus on stocking, making it look all nice and pretty, and moving things around, and cleaning, uh, some shelves off and whatnot. It's actually gonna be Oh, that'll actually be really nice. If we're actually going to be closed that day, I might actually just say, yeah, I'll do it. Sure, give me that eight hour, uh, eight hour, uh, you know, a holiday pay plus time and a half for work in the holiday and my normal wage. I'll take that. <laughs> We gotta do the side skirts. My back. Oh, my back. Ooh, wow, that is actually fucking tender. Oh my god, that is very, very tender right now. Do not know why. This has happened to me before, though. I can say that much with the certainty I've had this kind of pain in my back, lower back core. And that's when I was working as a... I was working as a receiver for a restaurant, so... That was a lot of fun trying to lift that when I could barely fucking bend over. I, I did it, though. That's rather easy. So then, yeah, that should, yeah, that's the entire waist. So, I'm just gonna pop it in there now. There. Now he's a proper nugget. <laughs> oh my fucking fuck. 
Okay, looks like next it's going to be the left arm. And, oh my god, it's actually in like not that many steps. Well, the leg is a bunch of steps. I figured as much. Legs are always a lot. point I've basically abandoned the damn uh, runner holder. About an hour? Okay. Yeah, we're right on track. For my usual predictions. Oh, some more interesting and exciting news on the Power Rangers front. The uh, next season is actually going to be starting pretty soon. It's going to be a shorter season, about 10 episodes. As a continuation of Dino Fury called Cosmic Fury. It's taking the Rangers from, the Dino, from Dino Fury and, you know, giving them another season with a new name, brand new suits and zords, all that jazz. Which... Yeah, and hasn't been done in the series history since the original three seasons. 
But a very, very interesting thing, though. They released the opening for it and listed in the credits and showing up during the fucking uh, thing is David Yost as Billy again. He's the as the Mighty Morphin Blue Ranger. He's just in the series as part of the cast working with them. So that's kind of cool. Even uh, cooler is they released a trailer, and inside the trailer we get we spot the um, initially comic exclusive Dino Charge Dark Ranger using the uh, suit from Core Uger, the Death Ranger suit, which that is it's actually kind of cool. So we've got the Dino Char, I mean, the Dino Fury team in brand new suits. Along with Mighty Morphin Blue and Dino Charge Dark. Like, what? What? What's next? <laughs> what other surprises are they gonna have? I think they have like the kind of sort of kind of mentor-ish character from Ninja Steel in there as well. Because he showed up in Dino Fury for about an episode or two. And back in Ninja Steel, for at least an episode, he tra he did morph into, like, a second Red Ranger. So is he going to do that again? He's just going to suddenly morph into his version of the Red Ninja Steel Ranger again? Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. That would actually be kind of cool. <laughs> You've got this brand new team. You got this. You got this te technically old team, using completely American-made suits, but they're also being assisted by a random amalgamation of other previous Ranger characters, and they're still, you know, transforming into Rangers and not just being there as like, "Hi, I'm just a guest." <laughs> oh, thanks for the follow, Chef Rex. Appreciate it. How are you doing? Oh, it wants me to use one of these, uh, big old, uh, so tiny. Oh my god, it is thin as shit. Pretty good, so you're working on the HD? Yep, I am. I'm slowly working at her. I mean, I say slowly, but I get these things done pretty damn quick. Oh my god, are you... Oh no. <laughs> This thing wants me to place it literally by eye. Literally by eye. There's like no thing for me to... Oh, great. Oh, well. Oh, well. How... Kind of... Is that lined up? Oh, that is off center. Starting your... Uh... Okay. Master Grade EX... Strike Freedom. Nice. Oof, that one is not cheap. Not, not cheap. The master grades in general aren't cheap. Wrapped up RG, new gun clear. Okay, funny story. I traded it in for two RGs. Oh, okay. Hmm. Actually, it's a little nice. Master grade or real grades. I'm stuck solely with high grades. I mean, the only master grade I have technically built was a clear core fighter that I got as a prize from the Gundam base in Japan. <laughs> it 
Definitely wasn't anything too, too special or crazy, but that's technically the only Master Grade I own. The only Master Grade in a sea of high grades. <laughs> Oh, I see why the orange doesn't go all the way around. I'm going to be putting something over top of it. That makes sense. We're finally giving this thing a hand. Finally, the heavy Gundam gets a hand. And 17, okay. Buddy wins the MGX at a club raffle. He won my two gloss exam HG kits. He really wanted them. I jokingly said MGX. He was like, yes. Oh. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely. I, I think you came out on top there. they were worth and I know what his was worth. Okay. No one felt cheated? Okay. There we go. Our heavy Gundam has an arm now. He's not completely a nugget anymore. scales are. Been building for quite a while now. Good old fun hobby. MG versus MG. MG is just the best balance of size and detail. I can believe that. Real gray just. I mean, it does have all that detail in there, but everything is so small. It's really, really tiny, and I mean, as durable as they can make these parts, that shit will still be delicate. Master grade, they get to make them a little bit bigger, so they can be a little, a little they can be a little more durable. And you get to actually really, truly see the detail. You really get to see the detail with a master grade compared to a real grade. You're not really having to really lean in there.
God damn it. Nightbot, not the message to play to put right now. I'm not playing a game. <laughs> I gotta fix those timers. Like, I'm not playing a game, Nightbot. You can't spoil how a fucking high grade goes. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, it's a Gundam. <laughs> oh, right here. Staring at the box for a better part of an hour now. I gotta work up the curse to break the first plastic bag. And, yeah, gotta start somewhere. There, and it's now it wants the other big long orange sticker. Now grabbing this little pain. Lining it up will be even more so. No, actually, the first one I did wasn't bad. I've definitely had worse. This isn't the worst of uh, what stickers I've ever put on. Nothing is gonna beat the fucking high grade Sinanju and all of those goddamn sleeves engravings. Nothing is gonna beat that thing. I, ugh, I hated doing that. Such a pain in the ass. I'm again. It, it looks great though. It looks fantastic now that I got it all. I have it all put together, but ugh, I never want to do a sleeves-styled mobile suit again. Sananju is my first and only. I mean, it's probably the worst out of them all, but still, that was just bad. I can only imagine what the RG was like. I just built the the high grade and ugh. That fucker took me over like about six hours to do. I knew it might take a little longer, but not that long. It was mostly just because I'm fiddling with fucking stickers the whole time. 
Ugh, yeah, way too small, way too thin, going over way too much of everything at once. It's like, just make it molded parts at that point, please. Like, just make it, you know, proper color, correct, the color separated parts. Have you seen the RX 93 high weapon? How is an RG clear? I have not. In all honesty, I'm not even really a fan of the of the new the new Gundam high weapons variant. I'm really not. It gets it's it loses something. Just too bulky. Way too bulky. There's a lot going on there. Generally, not really a fan of any kind of full armor variant of a lot of things. Well, I say that, but I look at the full armor um, Mark II, and that thing is just pure sex. Like, goddamn. I'm fine with that, but the full armor Zeta? Gross. <laughs> just. No, that, that suit is meant to be, you know, sleek and fast. Not bogged down by shit. Full Armor Double Zeta is just kind of, okay, whatever. We traded in a lot of our yellow and red for even more blue. And you can't even count full, the full armor unicorn as a full armor unit. It's just the unicorn with a whole bunch of weapons strapped to it. Literally. PG Unleashed looks amazingly steep. Oh. That thing is literally just a work of art at that point. The PG Unleashed is just a work of art. And there we go. We got arms. Who needs the legs? They're just for show, anyway. <laughs> okay, building the foot, the tootsies. I'm gonna build two tootsies. I skimmed through it. I didn't watch the full, full thing. I skimmed through it parts. There is... There's a lot that goes into that thing. It's worth its hefty price tag. They literally am just building a small robot. <laughs> All the little details and moving everything in it.
Oh, gee, I was wondering when this part of the music would start. should find a different uh, lo-fi for these at some point. <laughs> I can only listen to that astronaut thing so many times. I don't know why it's part of this playlist. <laughs> We have feetsies, just the feet. No legs, just feet. Perfect. <laughs> they took my shins, Hank! I can't do a cotton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you kind of knew what I was thinking there too. Fucking Cotton Hill. <laughs> hey, Nichols, how's it going? if it's too hot. No, oh, welcome to summer. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad it's going well, though. Other than the heat. Our AC is not acting up today, so it's actually decent in here right now. Oh, now that I just said that, watch. Later in the week, it's going to be fucking up. I just put it out there in the universe, so it's gonna happen. That is my curse. I will inform you all if I did curse myself. So yeah, how was the cottage? You guys just all got back from there. So yeah, how was it? Cottage Lully go every year and usually have shite weather, but this year it was a beauty. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I know you guys go every year, like you, Jen, and a few others. I'm glad he had good weather this year, though. But now, welcome to the fucking heat storm. 
summer's last, you know, uh, death throw before fall begins. And now I don't have a lake to go jump into. You have a bathtub. <laughs> ah, oh, okay, I see. I see, I'll see. There we go. Whew. Hour and a half? Yeah, that's about where I thought I'd be. Once I started the legs. A lot going on with these legs. Nichols, you missed out on me playing a Katoa Shoujo VOD. I mean, a, a mod uh, this week. Well, at least, you know, a, a, essentially a demo, the first act of one. That was a lot more fun than I, I mean, I expected it to be really good. But, oh my god, it was. It brought me back. It literally brought me back. <laughs> It went really well. It was like maybe one or two uh, spelling or grammar mistakes throughout. I mean, they're, they're transcribing a fan fiction, so I expect, you know, things to happen. Just, just a slip up of the keyboard every now and again. And just maybe a few too many quiet moments where there's just no music playing. But those are like super, super minor. It was fantastic. Introduced to br a brand new character, uh, got more into, like, r really delved into, like, how much, like, Isao really wasn't happy with his situation, and it was really playing up kind of his depression, and even the new, the focus girl character, Saki, just more or less agreed? She has her own reservations about the, like, that kind of situation. But is also trying to get him to break out of that as well at the same time. It's actually something. It is very, very well written. So I'm like really excited for when they put in Act 2. Which is going to be much longer than Act 1. Because, well, he just wrote more for Act 2. Act 1 is just supposed to be... Okay, if you started playing the game... Uh, uh, just play the game normally, and then suddenly these scenes kind of replace other ones. And then when it kind of jumps forward in time, you assume the regular game cuts, you know, regular game scenes and stuff are happening. <laughs> it's actually very neat. It slots, it manages to slot itself into, like, the base game, like, timeline-wise, very well and perfectly. So I was still able to meet all of the girls. I mean, we didn't see that happen on the stream. It jumps over that because, well, I mean, it was a fan fiction. So they only wanted to get some key moments in there just so you kind of understand where you were in the story. It worked very nice. Still meets all the girls. Still goes through his regular full week. It's just the during festival time he's hanging out with the new girl Saki. So yeah, um I absolutely cannot wait for more. I want more. I I, I want more. <laughs> I could read it. Like I could just read it, but I want to play through it. 
I want to play through it on stream with everybody. Because it just... It just feels more fun that way. So I will patiently wait as this very small team works to transcribe a fanfiction into, you know, the visual novel engine and get all the sprites to appear and music cues to happen when they happen. I'm, yeah, I'm just so looking forward to it. I think the last post they made online about it uh, about a month ago said they were probably going to release the next uh, what is it, uh, next act within like two or three months. So pretty soon. I am excited. Yeah, keep an eye on that. Oh, and also, Mochi redeemed uh, for me to play a game, so I'm going to be playing Ratchet & Clank at some point. <laughs> Soon. I'm going to be putting that into the, you know, uh, the game rotation until I finish it. <laughs> and don't worry, I do still have plans to go back to uh, Fallout New Vegas and actually finish that game, now that I don't have to... I'm not as bothered as much by the tinnitus. So I don't want everyone's points for that one to feel like they just went to waste. I will finish that game. As will I do with Dark Souls as well. I will eventually get back to that. And Subnautica, I'll face my damn fears. And finish the fucking game. Oh, wow, that's neat. Okay, I like that. You guys didn't really see it, but uh, we got one bend here, and when the second bend here goes, it moves the knee pad with it. That I that I like a lot. <laughs> Normally the knee pad would just be like molded in along with this so it's totally static when this joint second joint moves, but they connected it to the joint so it slides up and down with it. That that is neat. I like that. I like that a lot. Gundam Origin kits or something else. That. Now we can get the full effect with the knee pad on. like that a lot. Okay, so that's one leg. Now I'm doing the next leg. Not even connecting the feet yet. <laughs>
So kind of a fun, interesting-ish thing. After I put the VODs up on YouTube for, uh, what's it called, uh, the Kato Shoujo mod, I decided to just look in the search just to see if anybody else has, you know, posted any VODs of that, like, and just any videos of them playing through that yet at all. Uh, I haven't found any. So I might be the first one to have potentially have been the first one to play, like, stream it and put it up on YouTube. So that's kind of cool. Possibly. There could be, maybe there's another one somewhere deep down that's just, I'm not look, using the right tags to find somehow. So, yeah, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> like, wait, I... I... I'm the first? Am I really the first? I'll take it. The only other mods of Katawa Shoujo that are currently up on, like, uh, uh, videos up on YouTube right now are the, uh... Our Summer's Clover, which is a semi-canon, semi-not mod uh, made by one of the writers themselves a little bit afterward. And then the multitude of, like, Russian mods. Because guess what? The Kadawa Shoujo mod community it was giant in Russia before, well... Four Leaf just said, okay, you guys can make mods. We're not going to be, like, mad at you or, you know, tell you to take it down kind of thing. The Russians didn't care, apparently. <laughs> just of all things, like, the Russian community is the one that's really into modding it. I don't know why. <laughs> Okay, Nichols, enjoy your lurk. Oh, and I missed a step for the last one. So the other leg to actually truly finish it off. I got ahead of myself. Neat. And foot. Okay. All right, we have a full leg now. Actually, we got the full leg. Let's give it its fucking leg. <laughs> That's tight. What just came off? Oh, the thruster. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, oh, the thruster flew somewhere. There it is. Found it quickly. Yeah. 
He's almost there. He's just... He needs one more leg. <laughs> Let's see how long he stays balanced like that as I build the rest of the leg. <laughs> he is... He's literally just... You're literally on one leg right now. <laughs> So let's see. Can I do this without knocking it over? Probably not. But we're going to give it a shot anyway. He's, he's tipping a little. He's still standing. I'm still standing. It's okay. He can balance on one leg pretty well. Without falling over. <laughs> Still stand. Damn it. <laughs> ah, he lasted pretty long. He lasted pretty long. I'll give him that. Some decent balance on this thing.
leg. Go in here. Oh, damn it. Now I really should probably get some super glue at some point just to keep that little head crest over the V-fin. Keep it in place because it just wants to pop off at the slightest tap. It's also just kind of a Jesus. Whole head came off. Wasn't pushing that hard. Yet apparently I was. There we go. Back on. Oh my. Now that comes off way too easily. Good to know. And I think I got it backwards. Damn, Baxter's applying for a job with the. Oh! Okay. Good. Oh my god, this. Damn, that head does not like to stay on. Weird. What, uh, what company? What, what game, uh, company? I'm curious. I would laugh if you said her interactive. <laughs> Called Studio Dry Dock. They made the game Wildflowers. Okay. I've never heard of them, to be perfectly honest. But that's unsurprising for me. I haven't heard of a lot of things. Okay, uh, wishing you luck and hoping you get it. Well, I don't know if I applied to Hurry Interactive a couple years ago for the same thing. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Community manager position, so I feel like I can do it. Oh, yeah, I think you could. I mean, if you didn't think you could do, do it, you wouldn't have applied for it. Alright, so there we go, right there. We have our heavy Gundam with his big old over the shoulder cannon. I mean, it's not that big. There's bigger over-the-shoulder cannons, but he has an over-the-shoulder cannon. He's also very dark. <laughs> He's very, very dark. Let's get some light on. But we're not done with him yet. We still got... Uh, his main weapon, the frame launcher to build. I mean, there's also the beam savers, but I mean, those are beam savers. Like, I have a handle on my backpack, put a beam inside of it, boom, sword. <laughs> and now I have extra beam saber blades. Those are always nice. Those are always appreciated. And that went not where I wanted it to. I'll have to hunt that down later. Okay, that can go. So let's build what's definitely the <clears throat> piece de resistance of the heavy Gundam. Okay, they call it the flame launcher, at least it's in here, but it's 100% supposed to be the frame launcher. You can blame just localization stuff and how L's and R's always get kind of shifted around in Japan. Just because they sound very similar. Ow. 
Oh, that hurt. I pinched, like, part of my hand between my nippers here. Not the sharp part, thankfully. Just the fucking really heavy part. <laughs> that have watched the SD Gundam G Generation Genesis uh, playthrough streams, you've seen what the frame launcher looks like whenever I have Mochi use it, so... Y you guys know what I'm... You, you know how big this thing is. Well, for those that don't know, or you know, just uh, cannot remember at the moment, well, you'll find out very shortly. This thing is almost done being built. <laughs> oh god, this is a beefy boy. Wishing you, wishing you luck, Nichols. I'm hoping you get it. to celebrate if you do get the job, right? I'll have to do something special. What that special thing is, um, I don't know. <laughs> I can come up with, I can come up with just a great general idea. Uh, uh, executing it? Uh, I leave that to other people. <laughs> I'll definitely post the celebration chat in my Discord if I get it. Well, we'll definitely be waiting for it then. I've got a good feeling. That's just me though. This frame, this uh, runner is almost completion did. Completion did. I can't even fucking words today apparently. I just made up my own word. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> this thing is, um... Wow. Bigger than I thought. Oh, but that's cool. This thing is perfectly molded to encapsulate the hand. slots into his hand and oh good god <laughs> I'll wait until you guys are all back from the ad there everyone's back there it is there's the frame launcher <laughs> Look at this big beefy thing. Also, his arm is now stuck at that angle. It can move up. But if I try to move it down. Uh yeah, that's as far down as it can go. It's covering the arm and juts out just enough at the back that it cannot bend its elbow down enough. 
Which, whatever, it's fine. It's a big fuck-off Gatling gun with missiles in the front. <laughs> He's just gonna constantly be kind of swinging it back like that if he doesn't want to have it pointing out at his friends. But because this is the origin version of the Heavy Gundam, it comes with a few, uh, extras. Namely, a... its own different specialized beam rifle. So it's a little different from the one Mochi uses in-game, but... Oh, they don't have a kit of the regular Heavy Gundam. So I essentially had to settle with the Origin version. But that's fine. It gave me an excuse to buy a kit from Gundam the Origin. wasn't just yet another RX-78-2. I don't need to have another RX-78-2. Okay, I have one Grandpa Gundam. I don't need to have another one. Variants, though, like the Heavy Gundam and the Gundam Alex or the Full Armor or all the other ones I'm going to slowly get to make the BB team. Those are fine. I just don't need another RX-78-2 Gundam. There, he's got his own little special beam rifle. It's a big old, he got a big old fat little drum here for some reason. And it's a little shorter. Jesus fucking. <laughs> so, okay, he can have his big old gun gat there, or he can just go with this little pea shooter. <laughs> Which looks like it can only be used with one specific hand. So I'm just going to put the hand on it. It's good old trigger hand. Because that also lets me just get rid of another runner. <laughs> million notifications right now. What the hell? Okay. Discord messages out the wazoo. There. Just pew pew hand. <laughs> <laughs> and then this guy also comes with a shield. Surprisingly enough. So let's uh, make the Heavy Gundam shield. At least partially might be. Yeah, that's fine though. I need to learn to turn my phone to, to do not disturb when I stream. I really should. I just always forget. I always do at work. I'm just never on stream. <laughs> I gotta learn to do that. <laughs> Among a million other things I should probably learn to do. thing moving. I don't miss one. There we go. Wait, it 
wants it. The Federation Star emblem first. Or cross. I don't know what the hell you they call it. Actually, no. They want it plugged into this thing, and then I plug them both in. Okay. I see, I see, I see. I understand now. I very much understand. This thing for its backing. Okay, so the that's interesting. The shield can fold up. I've never seen something like that. The shield can fold and then stretch it. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Fold it up for storage or when you're not actually completely deployed and then when combat happens, just drop her down. <laughs> okay. I guess. Can't get her fully straight though, so that's gonna annoy the shit out of me. Oh, I see, I see. I want it to equip the shield. I have to... Is this one done? That's done. Are you done? That's done. Polycaps, I'm done with them. I've been done with this one for a while. And that one's been done with for a while. Okay, so the last thing. If I wanted to mount the shield on its arm, I have to use a different kind of... Uh arm guard here that has a peg on the outside as well so that I can slot it into either one of the holes depending on how high I want this thing to let the shield sit so if I pull that off throw that on there there's a heavy Gundam with its shield and big old frame launcher. Not bad. Okay, uh, let's see, what else? I know there's more to the- yeah, just as I thought. The last bits of instructions on here... ...are for all of these stickers. All of the little orange marking stickers you see at the line art, uh, you know, right there. I am... Wow, I'm probably not going to be doing a majority of them because I just kind of don't want to. I might do a few. If I do, do I do them all on stream? Probably not. I don't know. At the very least, I'm going to put the... Uh ones that go for the on the ankle guards just to give that a little more definition so let's see 39 i'll get those ones in for sure right now just so something breaks up more of this dark colored here god 
these things are so thin. I'm going to go into a recessed area, which I mean, at least that makes it easier for just placement in general. It also makes it hard for placement because, like, okay, I have to get this thing squished down flat, but it's in a recessed area. So that means I got to, like, push something in there to push down on it. Good fuck. Taking the shin guard off, or ankle guard. So I can properly do this without manhandling an entire kit. to stay down, which guess what, it doesn't want to right now. Now I'll just do these orange parts on it. I'll decide a little later how many of them I want to actually put on. And I mean, if I always change my mind later, I, I still keep the sticker sheets, even if I don't use them. Hell, even after I empty them, I keep the sticker sheets. I don't know, I just do. So I'll see how that looks so far. Right, get your stupid fat fucking gun out of the way. Okay, yeah, putting the orange on the ankle guards is definitely a good move. That does actually break it up a little bit better. Gives it that little more of a highlight. And I don't know how many of them I'll do. I don't know if I'll do the ones that go around like the weird yellow boxes on the front skirt. Or around on the shoulders or what. I don't know. Those feel a little who extra to me. Like I said, once I do this, I'll bring up the line art for the Universal Century version of the Heavy Gundam, like the one that's actually in G-Generation Genesis, and then we can compare. We can compare the original to the origin version that I've just built, and we've been looking at the entire time in the corner there.
right, there we are. Yeah. The orange on the ankles was a good choice. Yeah, I'll see wh where I add more of the orange on there. I might do the ones along, like, uh, you know, along here and stuff. Just to really break that up even more. Because he has a lot of just pure, like, dark brown, gray, black there. Need something a little more to break it up. I don't know if I'm going to do the weird garter he has on. You know, the weird garter belt thing he's got going on on his right leg. That's a little weird. But at the very least, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. That's the minimum amount I'll at least put on. For sure. There we go. So let's swap screens. As I bring myself back into view. Oh, no, now everyone's going to leave. Because <laughs> now Baron's appeared. No one wants to see Baron. <laughs> ah. What the fuck? Damn. This thruster really keeps falling off really, really easily. I'm probably going to have to super glue that bastard on there as well. So there we go. The heavy Gundam. Also, let me turn relaxed movement off myself so I don't get double audio in my ear of my outro music and it. So there we go, the second suit of the BB team. Now joining PJ's Gundam Pixie. <laughs> That's not too bad. Two of the darker suits I have on the list already, you know, here and done, ready to go. I'll have some kind of pose for uh, Mochi's machine later. And I'll have it up there next to PJ's. So, that's two down. Seven more to go. I will build the entire BB team. I will do it. I'll probably strip Mochi's one down to just get rid of the shield to make it more accurate to the game. Hey, now I want to see Baron. Oh, I appreciate that. Let me just move that over there so I can get the pictures of the actual normal line art. Oh my god, that was tiny as fuck. So there's the heavy Gundam, the one, the line art we've been looking at the entire time. And let me add a new source for this one. That I'll delete immediately after. Oh fuck, it's giant. <laughs> uh, you can already see the difference. <laughs> you can already see the difference between the two. So, original, uh, original, origin, original, origin. <laughs> yeah, up to you, which one you think looks better. Uh, the, the original definitely has more striking colors, like differences, whereas the origin is very much like kind of like the same dark shades all around. <laughs> Yeah. And is in that standard RX-78-2 pose that all the freaking like, line art for these fuckers are in. <laughs> Let me 
Let's get that bastard over there. There we are. Yeah, so there's that. <laughs> Alrighty, so... Back. Let's take one quick gander at our schedule for the rest of the week. So, no stream tomorrow because that's going to be my late shift, so I'm not going to really have time to do a stream at all. And I don't want to chance it, as I've said multiple times. I don't want to get a chance getting caught, too caught up in something, and then suddenly I'm late for work. No, so, not taking the chance. But we will be back uh, Thursday. Uh, for some, uh, well, SD Gundam G Generation Genesis at 10, and at 7 p.m., it'll be me and Mochi collabing to talk about Grisaya. Now that I've finished the game, we can have a proper chat. <laughs> So if you want to if you want to see two guys uh, random thoughts on uh, that insane as fuck visual novel, should tune in Thursday at seven. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh my back is hurting. But with that being said, uh, let me get rid of the light. Want to thank everyone, you know, for watching, commenting, lurking, and following. I appreciate it very, very much. Don't mind this. Sometimes it's a little more comfortable to have an ear free when I'm just doing the gun blow. It's just more comfortable that that way. Um, hum, 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 hum. Ouch, my back. Ouch, my back. Uh, I'm not going to do a raid for tonight. Not tonight. Eh, maybe next time. So yeah, uh, thank you everyone. I, next time you will see me should be, uh, again, Thursday at 10 for uh, G Generation Genesis. And then 7pm later that night for the Mochi Collab. So I hope everyone has themselves a great rest of their night. And I'll see you next time.